So hey everyone, in today's video, we're gonna discuss about the future of SAS in clinical statistical programming. So guys, why we are discussing about this topic? Because from last few years, you might be observing a slight change of tools in clinical SAS. It means they are not totally changing the tools, but they are using different tools instead of only SAS. So earlier on this role, clinical SAS programmer SAS was the sole tool that was used for data analysis. But right now, companies are using R software as well and Python software as well for data analysis in clinical. So you can see a slight shift is coming. Now after this, a question comes up. Is SAS is relevant in 2024? So guys, yes, SAS is still relevant in 2024. The reason behind why since long SAS is being used for data analysis in clinical, that is because of regulatory acceptance. It means the regulatory bodies who are verifying the work of the clinical trial, their acceptance ratio was very high if you are doing data analysis or if you are doing the work on SAS. But now it is not limited to SAS only. They are accepting R as well. Okay, and in the past, some studies has been completed on the basis of R and they has been submitted as well. Now the question comes up, what are the pro and cons of using R or Python software. See, the benefit of using R software is specially that is customization. Compared to SaaS software, that is closed source software, R provides more customization. And same for Python as well, that also provides more customization. And both of this tool, R and Python, they have more AI capabilities, okay, and more integration. The AI part you can do more in R and Python compared to SAS as of now. And for R and Python, there is a huge network who are actively developing the software in their AI capabilities compared to SAS. So these are some benefits of R and Python, but there are some flaws as well. There are risk of using R and Python because they are open source. They are actively contributed by people like you and me. So someone like you and me, if they want to push some virus or anything that is wrong, they can push it easily being an open source software. But it is very difficult to be done in SaaS software because the SaaS software is fully controlled by the company. So whether there is a small upgrade or big upgrade in the software that is done by SaaS company and their developers, where else in R and Python, it is made by the contribution of people like you and me. So these are some differences, but still R is growing rapidly in clinical and in the coming years, for sure, it gonna grow. No matter like SaaS will be at the same position. It will be still at the top position only and it will be and it is still regulatory authorities are accepting SaaS more compared to R and other tools open source tools and even if someone is learning SaaS software in 2024 so they have to learn it because if you are applying for clinical SaaS role if you are learning R and Python that is benefit but you must know or you should know SaaS software so the sequence should be something like this if you are preparing for statistical programmer role or clinical SaaS programmer role the very first software you should know that is SaaS and then the second software you should know that is R and then the third software can be Python. But SAS is must, on top of that, R and Python can be additional benefit. So anywhere in the nearby coming years, you will not see that companies will replace this software, that they will replace SAS with R or R with Python. No, they're not gonna replace any software with each other, but they are looking for something better. What they can get better from R, they're gonna use the capabilities the things which is better available in our software, that is customization, the power of AI, flexibility in open source, that is more present in R and Python compared to SAS. So companies want to utilize and they are utilizing. They have done a lot of things in R as well. So globally, I talk to some people who are working globally in different companies in US, UK as well, in India as well. And what I found, SAS is still one of the major tool in clinical for clinical data analysis. Majorly companies are using SAS tool only, but on top of that, they are using R as well, especially R. Python is also being used, but the portion is very small compared to R and the major portion is SAS only. So right now, if you are learning SAS, so it's my suggestion that along with SAS, learn R as well and Python as well. And you're gonna benefit from this for sure if you're learning R and Python. And the people who are already working in the industry, for them also it is mandatory because instead of your organization will tell that please learn R or Python software, 
you should learn this upfront because this will increase your capabilities being a data analyst in data analysis these are the major softwares you know globally if you just see the ranking python is highly preferred for data analysts than r than sas okay but in clinical the things are different for data analysis in clinical domain sas is the major tool that is preferred than r than python so in any of the case if you learn this softwares r and python it gonna benefit you either you work in clinical or anywhere if you are analyzing data if you want to work on data roles it can be data scientist data analyst or data engineer so i hope guys you got the clarity from this video if you have any questions you can ask me in the comments and you can even connect me for one to one counseling as well let's meet in the next video till the time bye bye everyone and thank you everyone